Hello, everybody. <laughs> I hope you guys are doing good. Good morning. Um, I just got to be eight minutes. That's what Billy said. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, but yeah, I just want to give uh, glory to God before I, I go through this uh, passage. Um, even just, you know, sitting down thinking about how good God is to us. And um, Jesus is the, probably one of the only ones that can make me cry. Uh, I'm not much of a guy who tries to show my tears, but, you know, his love and grace can do that. And, uh, yeah, that I hope that while we go through the scripture, you guys may be able to feel his love um, before I'm even getting into it. I could feel it. So, um, yeah, I will um, st first start into the context of this. So it seems that um, Paul is... Uh, he went to this the, and preached to these people in, uh, it's called Asia Minor, and he preached to them the uh, gospel. And um, he was sick when he preached and ministered to them. But they received the gospel with joy and gladness at, when he first gave it to them. But after a certain period of time, certain false like believers came in and uh, perverted that, and they actually were in the Galatians, they're known as agitators, and they try to challenge him, and they try to confuse these people and bring up in them uh, where um, a curse is upon them because they're being alienated. It says that they're being alienated from Christ because they're not receiving uh, the gospel, but it's been perverted. And Paul goes on to say that even like if an angel, you know, comes and presents to you something else other than this gospel. Like, do not, do not receive it. So, um, yeah, he, he affirms that God, he's received this revelation from God to present the gospel. So he's affirming who he is. And uh, these false believers um, have uh, been trying to promote circumcision. And Paul goes on to say how that has no value, that it doesn't, that is not the right way. Um, so, and then Paul even challenges Cephas, known as, you know, Peter, and because Peter uh, is eating with, uh, like, Gentiles, and then the, the Gentiles, um, when Jews come, uh, sent from uh, James, they start, like, diverting from, or uh, Cephas, Peter, uh, separates from them. So Paul calls, them, calls him out and says, you are condemned doing this. Um, and he's trying, he's a Jew, but he's trying to promote these things that not even he uh, can fulfill, being the law. So he cannot fulfill those things, and he's trying to promote them. So that's where Paul calls him out. And then this is where, moving into this text, the life of the, the Spirit is so important because we see that um, with Jesus Christ that it is only through Jesus Christ. And now I will get into the freedom part. Uh, so it says you my brothers and sisters were called to be free but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh rather serve one another humbly in love so uh, as Billy said the freedom is something that is you know worth fighting for it does not come free and this freedom that we're looking here at here is even different than the freedom that we use or look at in the west today the freedom here is of God is not a freedom to just do whatever you want but we'll see those two contrasts with the flesh and the spirit um, but when it, the term flesh is used it's used as um, the Greek word for it is sarx and it refers to the sinful state of human beings often often presented as a power in opposition to the spirit so this, this flesh, the desires of the flesh are contrary to the spirit. Um, so then it goes on to say in verse 14, for the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. And that's a reference to uh, Leviticus 19, verse 18. And it says, do not, bear, uh, do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against anyone among your people, but lay, love your neighbor as yourself. I think this is such a fascinating thing, especially in this time mentioning to 
uh, love your neighbor as yourself because in the context of the law and those people trying to promote these uh, uh, falseness of, against the gospel and pervert it, uh, the love and connection, uh, love your neighbor as yourself, fulfills the law. And I was thinking about this a few weeks ago because I was, someone got me irritated. And uh, I was like, that verse is the one that I came to right when I opened my Bible. And I was like, Lord, how do I love this person as myself? And I felt the Holy Spirit convicting me on if I was, in, if I was that person and I did that wrong, and I got to kind of flip the switch and look at it from a different perspective, I wouldn't want condemnation on myself. I wouldn't want any bad things. So I would only want grace and mercy for myself. So when we do that, and when I had to think about that, I had to be like, okay, I, want, I do not want to be condemned. I do not want nothing like that. So I had to offer the same grace. And that is one of the beautiful things that we could love and meditate on. And that is one of the if you want to be lawful, that's the best lawful thing you could focus on is to love your neighbor as yourself. Um, and then it goes on in verse 15 to say, if you bite and devour each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. That is a thing that we often can too easily be pulled away into and um, where we start holding accounts of people doing wrong. And when we do that, we... Um, can get taken away from this gospel. So it's good that we meditate and focus our hearts on the goodness of God, and we'll get to it. We'll focus on more. So um, it says in verse 16, So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the f flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you do not do whatever you want. Um, Okay, I'll analyze that. So um, walking by the Spirit is a, a unique thing. So you're not just, not just doing whatever you want, freelancing, but you're focusing on the things of God. And to walk by the Spirit is to really move yourself out of the context of the world. You're not going to be out of the world. You're still going to be in the world. But to now you focus your mind on those things that are good and pure, and on God, and you are not uh, letting those things that are fleshy uh, pervert and ruin you, kind of, in a way. Um, and the, the spirit and the flesh, it says that they are contrary. The, uh, the spirit and the, yeah, the spirit and the, f and the spirit, and I would just read that, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh, for the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. Um, they are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. So they're kind of they're kind of like enemies, you know. The the flesh desires one thing, and the spirit of God des desires another thing. Um, so we we got to really again meditate on what God wants, and really try to um, stay away from those things because the, we live in a world, like Billy said, with the freedom that we have to fight for what we our freedom. So we have to realize that it's a, a fight and we can't just do, you know, whatever. And we have to uh, focus on those things that are good. Um, then it goes on in verse 18 to say, but if you're led by the spirit, you are not, not under the law. Um, now that, that's, a, that's a unique thing because um, being under the spirit and being led by God, accepting Jesus Christ as your savior, and him taking on, you, you were cursed, he became the cursed for you. So now you're being led by the Spirit by believing, and you receive his Spirit by believing. So now um, you are fully gi giving into this. Um, now it goes on to say the acts of the flesh are obvious. Uh, sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. And then it goes on to say in verse 21, I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now that's a, that was a warning for the people of Gal Gal the Galatian church, or Galatia, the people. And they, it, we could take it the same now, as we're not, as a church, even though we're smaller, 
Uh, we're not to give in to those uh, things that shouldn't be among us. So we should uh, really move away from these things. And Paul, um, Paul says, I warn you, as I did before. So he's done this before, that the people who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. So us as believers, we have to be really careful with the way that we live our lives and the things that we let into our lives and just be very careful. Now, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Um, and against such things there is no law. I, I go back to the loving your neighbor as yourself um, and being led by the Spirit. And that we kind of as when we were singing, we were talking about meditating on these, these good things and focusing on Jesus. Um, but all of these things are good, and uh, by f living and focusing on the, the Holy Spirit, we allow ourselves to not, you know to be pure, to be good, and we could even be challenged with adversity as this, this church is or these people are being challenged. We could do the same thing and we could focus on these things. And as Paul, right before that, how Paul warns them um, that they will not inherit the kingdom of God, but then he gives them some good, he doesn't just leave them at that. He says, gives them some good news and some good things to meditate on. Um, and he shows them what is wrong and what is pure. Um, and then I, I, th I think it's a, a beautiful thing with there being no law. Against such things there is no law. Why is there no law against these things? Because all these things are good. All these things are pure. All these things are loving your neighbor. So it's in this, this, it's not just about completely fulfilling the law because if that's the case, no one can do it. So the only way we can live our lives is as it says in the scripture a few pages before, we who are, we who are Jews by birth and not sinful Gentiles, this is Paul talking to Cephas, Peter, know that a person is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. And then he goes on to say in chapter 2, uh, verses uh, 20, The life I, I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness could be gained through the law, Christ did for not, died for nothing. So looking at that scripture and analyzing it, uh, we can't, if we try to be like lawful and very tight on things with other people and even ourselves and in the church and we don't have mercy or grace because God extended that grace to us through Jesus Christ. So if we don't do, we have to do the same thing and give that grace to other people uh, because we know that that's the hard way to go about it but that's the best way to go about it because if you go about it by the law you're condemned. So that's that's my advice: is go that way, you know, do that, um, and believe that. Um, and then going back to verse uh, 24, uh, those who be belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Um, that that's something. While I was reading this, I was uh, really thinking about is. Um, when you, when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and he was, you he was crucified, and he took your place, he took your curse, and he became the curse. So when he was crucified, he won that battle. He won that war for you that you cannot win on your own. So crucifying the flesh of the one who was crucified now covers us. So the crucified Jesus now covers us. So then we crucify the things of the flesh because we focus our minds and our whole will on the things of God and that's that's where those things become um, of the world become dead to us and that's where you see a lot of times where people are putting off the things of the old and you could see that's 
that's where I like talking with some family and we talk about the Holy Spirit and uh, we talk about, you know, how's the Lord changed you in the last, you know, certain period of time? And uh, I'm like, oh, I've been the same, you know. I, uh, I cuss every other sentence, but you know, Jesus loves me, gives me grace and mercy. And I said, I asked him, how long have you, how long have you been doing that? And uh, they're like, oh, for, you know, my, I guess my whole walk. And uh, I didn't tell them, but because, you know, I felt like, you know, maybe God can guide them in that and we'll have talks steadily. Um, but came to my mind is there's a reason the Holy Spirit is called Holy Spirit and not Dirty Spirit. <laughs> you know, because you, you, he works in you to bring those things of God to the light. He uh, moves, moves those things that are impure and he brings about those things, the fruit of the Spirit, uh, with love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. But if you try to do it by the law and anything like that, it's not going to work. You're going to feel like you're digging a hole that you just cannot get yourself out of. Uh, but thanks to God, through Jesus Christ, we're, we're better, and we set our eyes on uh, God through his Spirit. Um, and then... Uh, I like this one, verse uh, 25 and 26. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. So, and then let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. Um, so keeping in step. For me, when I think about that, I think of a, a, not just, you know, Jesus Christ did what he had to do. I'm good to do, you know, whatever. Freedom. You know, I love freedom. But it's, it's not that freedom that we are called to. It's a freedom to serve Christ. It's a freedom to uh, where um, our desires change. Our heart gets moved on those things that are uh, different. Uh, that's where the, the new creation comes. And Paul even talks about it. What The thing that's important uh, is not circumcision, but the new creation. So that's... That's the important thing is that we, we realize that uh, how we're supposed to live is a life to please God, uh, not becoming conceited and provoking each other. Uh, and that's where, like, it's less of me and more of you. Like, uh, for example, I, um, I was working the other week, and a uh, guy said that this random guy came up to him and started cussing him out. And you know, at, at random. And if you're not used to being, well, anyone might get a little irritated with that, you know. But um, if if you see the old creation come get attacked that way, and we're not set on the Lord and how He's called us to be and how Jesus was, um, you know, then we we see that. Um, certain characteristics will respond differently than we used to. We might not, I'm not saying we're not human. I'm not saying we're just not still in this, you know, the flesh, but to be led by the Spirit. And uh, like I asked the guy, how, so how do you respond? And uh, he's like, and he's another believer, and I, I admired his response. And he's like, I said, did you get offended? And he said, no, I, did, I didn't get offended. And I, was, I asked him, just out, out of curiosity to ask him. And he said, um, because I want to glorify Jesus and pride or selfishness in any way will not glorify him. Um, but that Jesus, and he, he, led me, he led me in that conversation to the cross. And uh, I, thought it, I thought it was beautiful just to hear him. And, you know, saying how Jesus on high can't, coming down, you know, and taking, like, even how I was going to talk about, I was going to initially preach on the disciples, Jesus washing the disciples' feet, and how that's, a, that's one of the lowest things you, you could do. And from being on high to the, do, doing that and getting crucified and not reviling when he's getting reviled, that's, that's the character that he's called us to. And that's, that can be a challenging thing sometimes. And it's where it's like, 
Uh, and this is one thing I feel like the Lord's been working on me a lot is not me, not me, but him. And, uh, you know, if I'm meant to say blah, 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 and, you know, it work and someone come to the Lord, and I'm not saying that's what this is, but uh, if that's what he wants or if he just wants me to be silent or if someone comes and tries to tempt me to try to do wrong, uh, it's only through uh, the life of, uh, of living, uh, the life by the Spirit, that you can do these things because the Spirit in you of God will work out these things. And you receive that by believing the message that you heard of Jesus Christ. So, um, yeah, I just, um, I just think it would be good for everyone to focus on that in this time, especially with a lot of crazy stuff going on and with people trying to attack you with the enemy trying to come at you in any single way he can. Um, and with the different trials that uh, if you, you focus on this world completely and you're only consumed by it, that it will uh, devour you. But if you focus on God, there's hope for you. And if you believe that God sent his son to die on the cross for your sins and you live a life where you believe, you believe that and you have faith, you know, you're saved. So, um, yeah. But I hope that blesses you guys, and that's my first time preaching, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah.